what's going on everybody well I had this greenhouse over here in the spring I've since moved it over back to this location and it's a little bit closer to the main garden and it's just in a good spot it gets lots of good Sun I liked it over here too but I figured I'm gonna make another greenhouse garden shed that looks sort of like this one but the difference is this one's gonna have gravel for the floor it's not gonna be a wooden floor it's not gonna be raised off the ground as much so the first thing I've had to do is clear out where I had everything of course every time you build something you always have uh, leftover junk all over the place at least I do I'm not that organized but had to clear it off and then I'm gonna to have to measure it out to see how exactly I'm gonna put it in here it's gonna be 8 by 10 and it's gonna have the roofing material for the windows just like the greenhouse garden shed over here after getting my plan together I picked up about five hundred dollars worth of lumber has it stacked over here did this a couple weeks ago got the weeds growing around it already and for the back wall I have a whole bunch of old deck boards and these are still in pretty good condition they should do just fine for a back wall uh, they're three foot long so I'm gonna actually make my beams three foot wide on the back now the most important thing to do when you're doing a greenhouse or a greenhouse garden shed is you got to make sure that you have an area that gets a lot of Sun you can't have a lot of trees blocking I picked this area uh, once I got my wood all put together got my plans uh, drawn up have to level it out now so I took my rototiller and did a quick uh, just a light brush atop, across the top with the rototiller and then took a heavy duty rake and raked up all the roots and the grass that was left uh, by raking up the roots and the grass it means that it won't settle as much uh, because the roots and grass will decompose underneath the wood and then it'll make it sink so now I just got to level this out a little bit better all right all the grass along with some dirt it's going right here into this raised bed there we go rake it out and I can put some more cardboard over the top of that one and maybe some more dirt all right well I got the uh, foundation laid on this one and I used bricks on the bottom and the bricks are going to keep it off the ground then I'm going to fill this with a lot of river rock basically the same type of rock I have there in my walkway I'm going to fill it up with river rock I also put a drainage system into it uh, perforated holes in this uh, plastic pipe to collect any water it's also going to have an end down here that will also uh, pick up the water that's draining off the front on the corners I put in uh, screws and the screws are just to keep it together while I'm building the uh, frame well I decided to uh, change my plan a little bit I decided to bring in my gravel for the floor uh, before I put the uh, framing the rest of the way up that way I could uh, bring my truck all the way back in and fill it with gravel without having to go through a frame or if I had the walls up already uh, through the door so it made it a lot easier for me I got the front frame put together it's uh, 24 inches two feet and I'm doing that because I'm going to be using the same type of uh, roofing material for the window on this one but I'm going to be putting them uh, vertical instead of horizontal and they will be able to overlap also the front frame is a foot below the back frame so I can get some uh, pitch on my roof don't need a lot of pitch because we don't get a really heavy snowfall around here uh, and this thing will be able to support whatever snow we do get in this area alright I got wall 3 up 
Uh, one of the things I did with wall three was down here, just like on the back wall, I uh, put this one sideways. And once again, I'll be showing you how I'm going to be putting in my boards from back here, the reused boards on the back. Well, the reused boards are also going to be on this one right here, uh, going this direction. And now for the tough part, doing the uh, east side wall, which is going to be the uh, one that has door on it. Well, I got another wall done. This one is on the east side. Got the piece for the door in here. It's all ready to go. Gonna have a 36 inch door that I picked up. It's actually a storm door. And next, I have to go and get this roof set up and put it on. Well, I got the roof joists in. They were sort of a pain in the butt. Had some extra hardware uh, left over some of my other builds that I put to use up here. Cut some crazy angles. The whole reason for the angles and the way that I have this set up, see if you can get on the top very much, is I plan on using uh, this rippled uh, wood for this type of uh, roofing material. If you do use this, be real careful because it breaks very easy. Just a little bit of pressure on some place that has a knot on it and that thing's going to break on you. So next step is trying to put the roof on. Uh, one other thing I forgot to mention is if you notice up there I have regular 2x4 uh, uh, studs. Go over to Lowe's this morning and they are totally out of pressure treated. It's like when they get it in it's gone within an hour. And uh, they're still trying to catch up from when the mill uh, shut down for about a month and a half and lost all their uh, inventory and people are using it as soon as they can uh, get it in. So I'd like to have pressure treated on the whole thing, but looks like I'm gonna be using just regular uh, two by fours up here for the time being. Now, because this is one of the more difficult steps, I'm gonna get a little bit more detail into it. I laid out my roofing material on the ground, that way I can get a good picture of what I'm gonna be doing. Um, if you're curious, I'm using Tough X Seacoaster Vinyl clear vinyl uh, for the seams in between the two pieces I'll be putting in some uh, silicone for water sealant for putting it all together I'll be using these nice little screws with the rubber gasket on it and up here on the roof on top if you notice I have these beams just about the low point of each one. That way I can put it in and it'll, these are 24 inches apart and I'll be able just to go and set it in and drill some extra holes coming up in order to support the roof material. Well it took better part of a day to put the roof on On the ends, I folded over, drilled it in. If you look closely, you can see the silicone that I put in. That'll keep it from leaking. You might say, why are you worried about it leaking inside a greenhouse? Well, the thing is, I am going to have some tools in there. And I don't want to have my tools get wet. Try to get in close here. You can see the ripples. I will have to seal those a little bit. Have some seal foam. Main thing is you want to make sure that you're not getting the uh, uh, air drafts coming in and out. Air drafts will cool down your greenhouse and then you're defeating the purpose of having your greenhouse. 
Well, it's been a couple weeks. I've had to uh, do some of my own gardening and actually uh, pulled up one of my tomato plants that was uh, tomato plant beds that was all done. Got a couple more that are almost finished up. It's almost mid October. Got some of my walls up over here on my greenhouse. Now, the inside walls. Uh, they're pretty much all mahogany and it's all old decking material it's all reused it's treated mahogany on the back here you can tell that I'm gonna have to go in and put some caulking in keep the air out one of the most important things with the greenhouse is you want to keep the airflow from going through because that airflow is gonna bring your cold air in and I'm gonna come and uh, put a whole bunch of caulking inside here I left an area down here for a lower vent area up top for a vent and the other side I'm going to be putting vents in on the other side I wanted to take a second and show you the type of wood that I used for the back of the greenhouse and my buddy he was getting rid of his deck putting in a Trex deck and he asked me if I'd like some of his wood. He said some of it was okay. And there you go. This is mahogany. I was drooling when I was getting this stuff. Uh, some of it looked like it was repurposed already for the deck. And then used in the deck. Other than the paint, a little bit of wear on it where the paint was peeling that's some nice lumber there very sturdy probably lasts forever well I finished up the caulking show you this side first this is the last one I did wanted it to look a little bit better because I am terrible at caulking so I needed a lot of practice and as you can see here I had a lot of practice and it looks terrible but it's on the back side of the greenhouse, so I'm not too worried about it. The main thing is I can't see any light coming through here. That's the important thing, because I'm trying to keep all the air from coming in and out of the greenhouse, all the draft, because that will significantly cool down the greenhouse. Before I put the windows on the front, I'm going to be putting in my boards here for my shelves. Uh, it's important that you put on the uh, boards for the shelves before you put the windows in because your arms are going to be moving into weird angles and the uh, windows will sort of block where your hand goes so it makes it a little bit more difficult. So one of the things I noticed when I was putting my uh, shelves in is I noticed that my uh, horizontals had moved uh, slightly uh, to the right and I needed to get them back to the left. So I put in a come along up to the top, tighten it down, and that brought them back over. Now, I also put these little blocks in here, and the blocks are going to hold it in place and keep it from sliding back to the uh, other side. It should keep it all nice and stable again. Uh, basically just from working on it maybe a little settling uh, it just went cockeyed and now it's all back together alrighty now on my shelves because they're fairly loose down here uh, I used a very long uh, 10 foot uh, 2 by 4s for my shelving I'm installing a couple pieces of scrap lumber here that keeps it from uh, shaking as much. Gives a little bit more support. So I'm going to be just putting these in. As you can see, it bowed a little bit. Right now, the uh, pressure feed lumber that you're getting at uh, your box stores is very, very new. It was still wet when I picked it up and uh, made it a little bit difficult because the lumber itself 
wanted to bow in a little bit. Take this back out again. As you can see, it's bowed just a little bit. And that's because the lumber was still wet when I put it in here yesterday. It's dried out a little bit, got some sun. So, by putting these in, it'll give it a little bit more stable support. And hopefully, makes everything uh, hold up a little bit better. I'm ready to start putting the front wall panels or windows or roofing material, whatever you want to call it, up on the front. And I wanted to show you a quick trick to make your uh, cutting of these panels a lot easier. So I need about uh, 7 foot 3 inches on it. And if I have a 7 4, work fine for me because I got a little overlap area. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to take off 8 inches. Then I'm going to take a Sharpie. And mark it all the way down. Works a lot better if it's more if it's dry. But these things condensate pretty good. So I got my line coming across. I have eight inches off. Pull these things apart. Pull out the one that I have ready to cut. And you can either use big giant scissors. Work just fine on this material. And if you have them, sheet metal shears work really good too. I'm going to go ahead and finish up the rest of these. Got the upper section in. Now I got to come down and do the bottom. As you see up there, I have uh, caulking. So I filled it with caulking, squeezed it in. All right, well, I got the uh, front uh, window pane on or the uh, uh, roofing material put on. As you can see it's nice and see-through if we look up here got a nice bead of caulking going around it's all sealed up the mistake I made with my greenhouse garden shed is that when I put my greenhouse garden shed together I decided to uh, uh, insulate it afterwards and using uh, some material insulation, it just didn't really work as good as I wanted it to. So I ended up having to put these end pieces on to keep the rain out. And the wind and the rain are going to hit it dead on on this wall. All the uh, all the uh, wind and rain normally come from the uh, south up here in western Washington, so. I want to make sure it's nice and sturdy. I'm probably going to put some uh, two by sixes in here and then bolt them in just to make sure that I have that extra support in here to keep it from bouncing back and forth when we get a heavy windstorm. I got the front windows on. Got the side panels or windows on, whatever you want to call them. Uh, roofing material. Got them all sealed in nice and tight. Got them all gooed up in here. Have sealed in the middle. Has some supports. Put some supports in. A 
I haven't quite figured out what I wanted to do with my vents yet. I also have to put in the uh, door and that'll be coming up here in a day or two. Alright, I finished up the roof, finished up the sides. As you can see I put a little extra awning on here. Also went and uh, put some silicone sealant in here. Here in the middle I added a support beam just in case we get a really heavy snow the beam will help out and keep it from falling through. I didn't feel like climbing up there to put in the screws into it so I just used some caulking and I have a 2x4 sitting on top to hold it down so the caulking will dry. It's pretty strong caulking. It's clear silicone. I wanted to test out the shelves really quick uh, before I stop uh, working on the uh, interior of it and made sure that a standard flat would go into it. Also I got these oven racks from an auction and they work really good inside your greenhouse. They make for really good uh, racks. You can put a lot of weight down on these. And they fit in just fine. I was working in here today and doing the overhead beam. And it was getting hot in here already. And it's only about 55 degrees outside, almost 60. Uh, somewhere in there. But inside this greenhouse, it is a good 80 degrees. I leave my vents open. I haven't put in my vent system yet. I have some fans on order, some solar fans on order that I'm going to be putting up in both of the uh, top corners to pull out the overheated air. And I'll probably make another video on those to show you how I put them in. So when I put my lower vent, hey dog. Hey dogs, go on, go on, go on. When I put my lower vent into my greenhouse garden shed, I made a little error because I didn't take into consideration the expansion and contraction of the wood with the temperatures. For my newest greenhouse, I decided to do something a little bit different. For this greenhouse, I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm going to actually put the wood on the outside. That way I don't have to worry about expanding and contracting of the wood. That way it won't get stuck. It'll also not leave a gap in order to let uh, air in. And it'll go down. I'm going to be using a piano hinge here. Now I can get some airflow that goes through, uh, bring in some cool air, and the vent system that I'm going to have on top is going to. Uh, push the air out. Well I decided to buy a door and put it in to make it easier but I didn't measure right. So I'm gonna go and uh, run over to Lowe's and pick up a uh, 4x4 and stick it in here and uh, that way I can get the uh, door to fit properly. Once again, the box stores are out of uh, some of their pressure treated wood. So I went and got two uh, pressure treated uh, two by fours connected them together uh, to make up for the four by four that I couldn't get. And screwed that all in. All right, greenhouse is all done. Got the door on. The only thing I got left to do is uh, put a ventilation system in it. And I have those on order, so I'm going to make another video when I actually put the vent system in. Let's go ahead and check this out. Put the door in. Have my shelves here. Door shuts. I can definitely feel the temperature in here. I do have a thermometer. Go check it in a second. But I'm all insulated and I'm ready to do some gardening in here. Come spring, I'm going to have a place to put all my starts. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. 
If you did, give me a big thumbs up, push the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.